This case documentation cover a guided smile chrome maxillary dentate case. This case is using implant, direct implant system, and their direct guide guided kit. The, the records on this case were pretty straightforward. The patient has a lot of teeth, therefore, good, uh, there's a good stable habitual bite. And we have the normal photographs, very nice work here, uh, retracted in occlusion, left, right, center, and then a uh, full face, full smile. Uh, try very hard to get an exaggerated smile and then a nice profile image. So these are these are excellent photographs. One thing to notice about them in the uh, the intraoral photos is that you get the full depth of field. So this was taken probably with an SLR camera with a nice uh, a high f-stop. And, and the point is that you can see the teeth very clearly in the posterior and in the anterior. And that helps our technicians when we are making sure our mounting is proper, that the, that the occlusion and the bite is set perfectly, which is so important. Uh, um, so it's nice to have re really clear images. Now, in this particular case, we're going to open the bite. And I'll, I'll show that in a minute. Uh, but so the photograph records are excellent. Doctor sent in, well, we have a pan here, but uh, doctor sent in a CBCT and then sent in uh, uh, actual physical models as opposed to digital. We still get a lot of physical models and that's fine. We, we like them. You know, it's funny. You still get uh, little bubbles and voids and things like that when you take uh, traditional impressions unlike digital, but we do get the full anatomy almost every time when we have um, conventional impressions uh, just because a tray is gonna go into the vestibule usually goes in better than a digital impression captures a freedom better and the full vestibule which is really important especially if there's a lot of bone reduction right because we want to uh, to be able to make a pin guide and a fixation base that uh, that meet that tissue that you can try in right so we can you can make sure we have the full depth so we know um, the tissue is following the bone uh, and you can see here, left to right, the bite has been opened on the articulator. Looks like open just uh, maybe a couple, maybe a few millimeters. Make some space for prosthetics. Bite's a little collapsed, a little bit of uh, super eruption in the anterior. Okay, records were gathered. We went through the whole process of um, uh, getting the case open, set up, planned, met the doctor online, and planned the case. Uh, shipped it to the shipped it to the office. Here are the Sergi mats. You're probably familiar with these, but the top one is a 47 inch, uh, basically poster that goes on the wall so that you have the surgery right in front of you. Uh, you could just look over as opposed to thumbing through a book. You look over at the wall and here is the surgery moving through the surgery from left to right. Uh, pinning, bone reduction, osteotomy guide, and then picking up with temp cylinders left to right. And then the middle grid there is uh, indications for the guided kit, the, the sequence of the guided kit, what drills, what prolongation, and then of course, sagittal images and slices. All right, let's go to the surgery and uh, typical a uh, single arch case you're going to say take the you know um, try in the pin guide with the fixation base you can try it in without the fixation base in case you have a really sh um, shallow vestibule and you have to reflect first so you can put in just the pin guide and seat it make sure there's no rocking make sure it seats uh, very solid All right then you would then you assemble the two together the fixation base and the pin guide using the chrome locks, the blue plungers here. And then following the uh, surgery mat, uh, you can see here that, that uh, all long pins, all right, that's why you see them being uh, white, 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 white. Those, that's the long set. So all white, and then you can see the cross sections here. Uh, I believe there was an extraction here in order to seat it. Uh, actually, I see this little, little different image here. There's a green one there. So it's just more showing the pin guide assembly. So follow the 
uh, follow the surgery mat. And what you'll do is uh, while the team, someone on the team holds the pin guide uh, with apical force, a uh, doctor will drill. And, and usually on the maxilla, you're going to drill until you're about a millimeter short and then place a pin and follow that through all four sites and then come back with a surgical mallet and tap these until they uh, contact the metal. And the whole time, uh, the team, the team member, someone on the team is holding that pin guide in place, right? That is the key to a successful surgery is that the pin guide does not move, right? The teeth will hold it in place, but the, but the team has finger pressure. Now this patient has a lot of teeth so that you can put a lot of finger pressure to hold it in place the whole time, even while you're tapping with a mallet, tap it in. If the patient had was missing some teeth or had large uh, edentulous areas, then not quite as much pressure, right? Because you could move the pin guide a little bit by putting pressure on the tissue. So that would be a little bit less of a firm hold. All right. So once the pins are all tapped in and you can hear the noise when you, when the metal hits the metal, the noise will change a little and then you stop. With them all pinned, then the next thing to do is remove the, um, remove the pin guide, right? Take the pin guide out and then perform extractions and then bone leveling. And the bone is always level, leveled to the coronal part of the fixation base. This is your bone leveling. Uh, guide. All right, so once everything is removed and the bone is leveled down, then you try in the carrier guide. And this carrier guide is a little bit different color than you normally see because this case was completed by one of our partner labs in the country. So they use a little different resin, a little different colored uh, medical resin for their pin guide and their carrier guide. It's perfectly fine. Seat the carrier guide and be sure that it is not rocking. Make sure that it is not being held up by bone or tissue. Now, often it's tissue, so don't be don't be fooled by the tissue. You'll want to displace it, tie a suture, get it out of the way, and then seat the carrier guide. If it is rocking at all, find where the bone is. Usually, it's in the posterior, often the anterior lingual. But just keep trying it in until you find that it fits passively. All right. Then once you're passive, then the next step is to, sorry, all right, bone reduced. Next step is to drill your sites. And in this case, as mentioned, this is an implant direct system. So that means the uh, surgery mat is quite simple, right? This is the drill guide. So this is uh, 13, 11.5 because their guided kit is labeled by these numbers. And that just gives you the final drill. So you'll go through the drill sequence until you get to drill 13, which is 5.2 by 13, 4.7, etc. So their kit's very easy to follow. And then of course you have the cross sections just to make sure where you are within the bone to see if you in case you need to go deeper or wider, you can tell on the surgery mat. All right now, this case, this has an angle, 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 all angles. All right, so that's going to mean that uh, the timing of the implants are going to be critical to a successful uh, uh, restoration and a quick conversion of the prosthesis. I have an image here that I got from uh, one of Implant Direct's videos to show the implant driver because rotating is going to be so important, as I mentioned. So if you look, if we're looking down on this site, this looks dead on right here. That's the little nub. I'm sorry, that's the, that's the point. The nub that you see here, the little round nub, is right here in the middle, and that's what you line up with our nub. All right, you can see there's six of them, and there are six on the hex of their driver. Line that up. And the best trick to do is when you are almost to depth, 
then start to slow down your rotation really slow until you are at depth and one of these nubs lines up at the same time. You don't want to go backwards. All right, so try your best to just stop, you know, a little slow, 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 and stop. All right, and you'll see why in a minute why I'm covering that in such detail. But indexing is critical for position of, yes, the MUAs, but you'll find more importantly the, the trajectory of the temp cylinder. So here is another site. Now on this one, let me just, yeah, yep, yep. So on this one, you can see that the, um, that the dot is lined up really well with the hex. But in this image here, the dot might be off just a little bit. Actually, this, it's interesting. This looks really close. And when I was looking at this earlier, it seemed like it was off a little bit because this temp cylinder, the temp cylinder coming off here is a little bit out of rotation. And maybe this is a little bit out of, bit out of rotation here, but we'll cover that in just a minute. So the implants are in, you can see they're fairly subcrestal and doctor performed um, profiling. I know this, doc this particular doctor uses a, uh, just puts a cover screw on the implants and then uses a burr and then just opens this up. So lots of different techniques for bone profiling, but it is absolutely necessary. You must do it if you're subcrestal because the abutment is not going to seat. You may get a screw in, but it's not going to fully seat, which is key. All right, nice profiling, nice profiling. Okay, implants are in, and the next step is to put the carrier guide back on and then seat your abutments. And the reason uh, you want the carrier guide on is because these little notches here indicate the trajectory of the screw for the abutment the implant and the driver to hold the abutment in. It all goes in this direction, this direction, this direction. So when you put your abutment in, the hole for the abutment is going to be right here. Screw goes in, driver goes in. Tighten it down. Can't really see the screw access holes here, but if you could, it would be right underneath here. And the reason that uh, indexing is so critical when you're slowing down at the end is because you will get, uh, you'll get this, you'll get a temp cylinder that's a little bit out of, out of position. And you can see the plan was that they were just about perfectly parallel. But then during a little bit of the execution, right, these are, these are, the, all these look good except this one. And I believe that the rotation was off just a little bit. Kind of hard to tell in this image, but I, but that is why this temp cylinder would be rotated. And that will manifest itself in this temp cylinder rotated and forgive me. And then you'll, you'll seat the gaskets on each of the temp cylinders uh, then you'll seat the prosthesis and you'll just backfill around each of the temp cylinders with the uh, stellar looting material hit it with a light and remove it and take it back into the laboratory so i'm really not covering too much of the prosthetic pickup in this case but that part is pretty straightforward uh, uh, gaskets prosthesis blue plugs backfill remove, go back in the lab and do the conversion. And you'll pick up two prosthetics, of course. You always pick up two. Uh, one is the with the white lingual. That's the rapid appliance. And then one with the pink lingual is the uh, the prosthesis the patient's going to wear home. But we have lots of videos on prosthetic pickup. Uh, patient is uh, sutured and, and patient uh, just hangs out while the lab tech or while the assistant does a conversion. So I have this image here because again, I want to reiterate what happens in uh, a, a temp cylinder that's been rotated a little bit too much, right? Or uh, an implant that's been rotated, not really that big of a deal in this case, 
but this would normally be in the middle, like the rest, right in the middle of the hole, but it was rotated. All right, looks good, looks good, seated, holes are plugged. The prosthesis, this is, a, like I said, this is a partner lab, and the partner lab and the doctor work together uh, on chair side on every case, and the doctor, the pa the, the lab tech actually does the, the pink and the adjusting of the prosthesis on site. All right, so this showed up as a monochromatic prosthesis, maybe, maybe a little bit of pink, but then he could, the, the, the lab tech comes back and does the rest of the work, chair side almost, really some customized work. So nice outcome, great implant positions, nice work, and thank you for watching.